This is 33 pounds of stainless steel wire, and it goes into a machine like this that's then gonna make parts like this. And we're here with Giorgio of Meltio to learn all about it. Giorgio, thank you so much for uh, taking the time with us. What do we have here, this space age looking thing? This is our um, Meltio 450. It is a laser metal deposition machine. So we are working with welding wire to manufacture parts. So we've basically got six lasers on a head, some gas running through it, and this can be done in a machine, just like an FDM 3D printer sort of, or it can be put on a robot arm and taken into a multitude of environments to basically produce metal parts wherever or on whatever you need. So show me some of these parts over here. What's, what's, <laughs> this is insane. I mean, this is, what is this? These weird uh, antlers are actually a, a conveyor belt support. They are replacing by assembly consolidation uh, one part that was made out of eight uh, bent steel and welded the pieces. And now it's a single part with uh, more space underneath, uh, all out of a uh, 316 uh, stainless steel. This is a, a full uh, structure that is 900 millimeters uh, tall, but with uh, 0 0.6 millimeter layer height, all uniform. Yeah. This is hollow as well. So it's literally just the outlines done in 316L. See, we've got some titanium. Process uh, is a near net shape. So yeah. always we consider that uh, there will be some sort of a post-processing. If we are going with the parts like this, uh, it's maybe polishing, but here it would be machining. This, is, uh, this part is as printed, and uh, this is uh, after machining. And you've got, of course, the uh, ever popular rocket nozzles where you've got the channels going through and you've got for cooling it and everything like that. A very cool feature of our system in any of its configurations is that we can use a dual wire. That mean, means that we can use two wires inside the, the same deposition head oh, wow. and switching them by alternating them. It's just a five second switch. In this case, we have mild steel and a 316, so we can see the different uh, oxidation pattern. Right, yeah, you got rust on one and clean on the other. This is a, another sample part with a dual wire. We have a, an inner chamber of uh, nickel-based super alloy, and the, the outside is a 316 stainless steel. So are these all the different materials that you're capable of doing? We have a tool steel, mild steel. Uh, tool steel and mild steel on this one. Here we have uh, Inconel and uh, copper, actually a bronze. Inconel 718, super alloy, getting yeah. really, really popular lately, especially in additive, mixed with copper. So copper is another one that's really hard on a lot of metal printing systems because you can't, it's reflective and whatnot. So if you shoot a laser at it, it's just really, really challenging and difficult. Indeed it is. And we got stainless steel 316 along with tool steel. Yeah, tool, tool steel st is H11 in this case. We've got tool steel and Inconel 718 stainless steel 316 and copper, and then of course uh, stainless 316 and mild steel all mixed together. These are different materials, uh, same part in different materials uh, from mild steel to inconel, stainless steel, tool steel, and then uh, titanium as well. 3D printing headers as opposed to taking all those different you know, sections and welding them all together, which you can actually use 3D printing for. We have a lot of guys using jigs for cutting and jigs for holding custom designs. So you can speed up your welding process. Yeah, this is a 316, uh, can be done 308 or maybe an Inconel if you wanted to go very high temp. This is more a demonstration uh, of the capability of the, of the system integrated on a robotic arm. It's uh, constantly changing uh, its, uh, its curvature, so it's a part that would not be possible with any other process. This is a press brake tool made out of H11 tool steel and with a core of mild steel to save on the tool steel. The, one of the big things that's going on is big domes and everything like this. <sighs> All right, yep, this is a nice popcorn bowl for the living room, right? This is a, like a fuel tank or a gas tank, all printed uh, on the robotic system, which has uh, some stiffening ribs in, uh, in the inside to keep it uh, in shape during printing. So what they've done to keep this shape and to keep it from warping in different ways you don't want, you have these internal structures, sort of like an ISO grid, but just simple. So I love seeing stuff like this. This is actually one of those applications where, okay, maybe you've got a cylinder, something like this, and you need to add a custom tool on it. Now, was this printed onto this piece, or was this finished down from the entire printed part? Uh, this is a, exactly, we started from an existing shot, and then uh, we deposited uh, the compressor screw, which then can be just finished, and it's a, a part ready. This is uh, one of the best uses of this technology to repair or uh, add the features to an existing component. Right. So it would not make sense to print a shaft. You go with uh, a shaft that is already machined, and you add the material where you need it. Maybe you also you can uh, 
With the dual material, you can add some tool steel on your bearing journals and increase their longevity. Maybe you got a hundred year old part and it's like you're either going to have to recast it or remake it, or with this kind of technology, you can actually repair it and then it'll last another hundred years. Well, this is another great example too of what it net shape comes off the printer and what happens when you machine it. Yeah, this is a great demonstrator of how little material we need actually to remove when in finishing. It's yeah. just, uh, usually we have one 1.5 millimeter of extra stock. This doesn't look like much, but uh, it, it's good if you see it, uh, how it was manufactured, actually the, the video runs uh, on the hybrid system. A few layers were printed and machined inside, so that now all the surface inside is fully machined, which would not be possible with a right. curvature that's basically 90 degrees. So all this just moves around and everything, you're printing directly on a steel plate. Gets wire EDM uh, removed after the fact, and I mean it's relatively simple. It's figuring out the exact formulas and everything over time that is difficult. This is exactly what Meltio has done. It's Giorgio. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you too. If you guys want to learn more? Check them out online. Go to visionminer.com. We got all kinds of crazy stuff like this to check out. Thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day. And I'll see you on the next video.